What was your diagnosis? What did the doctors say? Hmm. Uh, I, I was diagnosed with acute lymphoblastic leukemia uh, at Emory, Emory University Hospital in Atlanta. And uh, eventually then I was diagnosed with uh, something called scleroderma. Scleroderma. Right. Never heard of it. Yeah. A lot of people have it. It's, um, it's when your skin uh, begins to meld, become one with the tissue underneath it. And eventually it becomes, uh, even it'll meld to the bone eventually. And it's, and it's lethal. And, and I assume painful. It's painful and it requires a lot of energy. It takes up a lot of energy. I got tired. Uh, you know, I, I ended up having like maybe a half an hour on my feet, uh, the energy for that. Wow. Do you think there were reasons or things that allowed this to be, this illness to be in your life? That's a great question. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> um, after after some Bible teaching and Bible learning, uh, I realized um, that there's some things going on in, inside of me. Yeah. The way I talk about it now is in my heart. Mm -hmm. uh, there were areas of my heart that um, needed healed um, by God, the creator of my heart. Uh, the way I look at it now, it seems like there are uh, different areas of my heart. Some, some more healed or more clean or more or less uh, light or more dark than others and uh, there were areas in my heart that needed healed and um, I believe that's what was causing the scleroderma as I think about it. A lot of people nowadays you know realize the mind-body connection and I believe that you know my thoughts were, accept were um, affecting my physical body. And so some of the things that I realized was that I had bitterness, or uh, maybe another way of saying that is, is hatred towards myself. Mm. Now, I, I really covered it up well. Uh, in fact, I, I probably covered it up to myself really well. Um, now I realize that, you know, when I have some hatred for myself, or should I maybe say, say it another way, is that I didn't love myself properly. And so it seems like when I don't love myself, then some sort of hatred comes in. And so also along with that, it seemed like there was rejection. Um, I would, in my mind, go down this road of rejection when I would talk to people. I would, I would in a way, imagine them rejecting me. And in, in the way that I would uh, adjust constantly what I was saying and how I was acting so that I wouldn't be rejecting. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't be rejected. Yeah. So I had a lifestyle. It, just, it's a life, it becomes a normal way to live and don't even know we're doing it. Right. right. The way I think of it now is, you know, if you would ask a fish, how's the water? The water would, the, the fish would say, what water? Yeah, that was normal for me to, uh, another way that I lived inside internally was that I wouldn't, left, I wouldn't leave myself off the hook when I would make a mistake. Um, it was difficult for me to let myself make a mistake and live with it. And uh, I, would, I would cover that up. That was uh, sort of a lifestyle. There's a lot of fear in that. I didn't realize it until, you know, I began to look at what the Bible has to say. So, how did you come to the point that you felt like this was interrelated with your illness? How did I come to a point that this was interrelated? I mean, how did you come to the wisdom, the understanding, wow, this has something to do with it? <clears throat> um, I realized that what goes on inside um, affects my physical body. Mm -hmm. And I had physical symptoms, scleroderma. You know? My skin was uh, becoming one with the tissue underneath it. Mm -hmm. um, 
What did you do about it? <laughs> Once you had this revelation, what was next? Good question. I began to I began to tell God about it. And I began to tell him how sorry I was about that. Um, I began to ask him to forgive me for putting those other things in uh, ahead of him, um, in place of him, higher than him. I would I would look at those things before I look at it at, at him, at God. And um, so I began to ask him to forgive me, and he did. And it seems like he enjoys forgiving. He enjoys forgiving. I believe that. Yeah. When we can't let go of our own, <laughs> we can't forgive. Right. We can't let go of our own self-hatred and bitterness. And so many times, that is what's killing us. But he enjoys forgiving. I believe so. I just get that sense after knowing him for a while. That he really does enjoy forgiving. I'm beginning to enjoy forgiving as well. Yourself and others. Yes. So <laughs> there was, for you in your journey, there was some repentance. Yeah. Asking for forgiveness. Repentance to me is asking for forgiveness and then turning the other way. Yeah. The way I talk to him about that is, you know, I'm so sorry about this. And I'm turning away from that towards you. Yeah. And if I can go on, to me that, be, to me that means beginning to look at my thoughts and, and, and take, look at them and see if, if it's, if that's what I want to be thinking now. And so now I begin to change my mind and change my thoughts. And that takes some that takes some focus, put it that way. So for a non biblical phrasing or word that some we're used to is really is our toxic thoughts can lead to a toxic body. I, yeah, I believe so. Yeah. yeah, and toxic thoughts to me lead to toxic emotions. Mm -hmm. And then and then our body just follows suit. That's what I believe. That's what I believe what was going on with me. All right, from, give me, I guess, some sort of timeline as in you, when you were first diagnosed with this, with leukemia, Okay. were you a Christian? No. Okay. Uh, had you ever been considered yourself a Christian? Prior to that? Yeah. Yeah, I probably did consider myself a Christian at one time. Uh, was there anger and bitterness and stuff toward the church, toward God, toward... Absolutely, mm -hmm. yes. I was raised in what I thought was a Christian home, and um, as an adult then, I sort of ran away from that. Mm -hmm. Because to me, there was so much hypocrisy, mm -hmm. so much judgment mm -hmm. in the church. I didn't want any, any part of that. So yeah, I... Uh, how did you, did leukemia knock you to your knees and have you rethink everything? <laughs> you could say that. It took, it took a while even after that. Uh -huh. I, was, um, I was part of the way through it before it knocked me to my knees. Uh -huh. And um, I, I came to a point where I was so tired of feeling so badly and affecting other people so much in a negative way, that um, I just decided to take my life. It just seemed to be uh, a good option. I had, uh, I had done some reading that I thought that at the time that everybody you know, ended up in heaven, that uh, God was an in impersonal God, and that everybody would end up Eventually in heaven. Eventually get there. Yeah, and so, so that had to be better than what I was going through and what I was putting other people through. Well, so came to a point where I tried to take my life and um, 
failed twice in one night. Uh, came pretty close. I ended up in the psych ward at Emory University. That's what happens off the time, oftentimes when you try to take your life. And um, and uh, it was during that that week that I decided I needed to learn how to live. And at that time, to me, that meant I needed to learn how to care for myself, self, self, self. And uh, that's when. That's when I gave in to Jesus the Christ. Mm -hmm. yeah. And to me, the prayer was uh, one that is like, well, uh, I'll give this a shot. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I give. Oh. And um, my life's never been the same since. In a very, very positive way. Okay, so they, the question was... I don't remember. Okay. Uh, Okay, from that night that you gave such a, you know, I'll give this a shot. Yeah. From that night in the coming, give me a, a, a again, a sort of a timetable of how yeah. events unfolded to, unfolded to the point that you went, wow, I've been healed of scleroderma. Great. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that. Uh, like, he, like we talked about, leukemia diagnosis was in November of 97. Uh, I asked Jesus the Christ into my heart on my 41st birthday, December 12th, 2001. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, at that point I had already been diagnosed with scleroderma. I had been diagnosed with scleroderma, I would say, in the spring of 2001. I'm quite sure now that I remember. Because that summer I was I was in pain and hardly had any energy to uh, it, it started in my ankles and my, my wrists. So when it's in your ankles, I didn't have uh, much energy to walk. You know, so that was that summer for me. Yeah, so that, uh, that was probably a lot of the reason that I got to my knees, the way you put it. That's a good way of putting it. Yeah. So, does that help? December 1st, uh, 2001. December 12th, 2001. Now, it wasn't until um, uh, December of 2003 is where I um, began to see in the Bible and learn, you know, get some teaching and learn and some ministry uh, around the those things that I just shared with you, the bitterness for self, the bitterness therefore for other people, and the rejection, the, fi the fear, mm -hmm. and the guilt. Uh, that was December of 2003 is when I began to see those things, began to pray and talk to God about those things and ask Him then to deliver me of those things, really. He, he also drove those things out of me. There were, you know, some spiritual dynamics going on. And I, I believe that's what the, the cause of the thoughts and the emotions are that we spoke of a few moments ago. And um, the, you know, the invisible world, the spiritual forces that would cause me to think about bitterness and rejection and fear and guilt. I believe that those needed to be removed and God's love drove them out of me. And I think that was a significant part of this. With the way I think of it is I began to participate with him properly. Uh -huh. Because I needed to allow him and his power in my life. So it was a choice of mine, but it was a leading. It was a choosing from his leading. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I like how you said it. His power began to drive some of those things out. The power of his love. I interviewed Philip yesterday, and I really what he said said in this culture so many times if we work for something, there's a certain element of pride in it. That if we work for it, then we earned it, we deserve it. So we tend to go to God with this work, you know, mentality. I agree, and and that's what he's one of the things. Almost just what you said. 
really? learning that it was a free gift of grace. It wasn't something he earned. Right. right. It was it's, the way I see it now. It's already been done. The, the, that work has already been accomplished by Jesus the Christ. Yeah. And I had to allow him or ask him and for and then that's when the power of his love moved. So did you have a I want to put it a different way. I mean a, a better way is that the Bible teaching and what the Bible has to say and I believe his spirit, God's spirit, the Holy Spirit moving on me inside caused me to say yes. Um, I'm asking. I'm following you. How <clears throat> did you come to the, okay, again, how did you come? What, what was the day when you realized the scleroderma was gone? Oh, yeah. That was the, the, one of the main questions, wasn't it? Um, I had received the teaching. I had received uh, prayer, and I had prayed, and um, it was in a uh, in a prayer session uh, that uh, another friend of mine was praying for me and with me. Mm -hmm. That it was after that prayer time that I saw a physical change in my skin. Wow. Yeah, you and saw your skin had changed. I saw my skin had changed uh, a few hours after that prayer time. So. It wasn't a uh, go and be, get, get prayed, touched, and healed. Completely, many events had transpired up to that eventual t time of prayer. Certainly. That prepared your heart and your, and your mind and, and, and to far this moment. When, but you did see in a one-time prayer session a, ch a, a real change. All I know is after that prayer session, a few hours after that, I saw a physical change in my body. Yeah. And um, I was on medication at the time uh, for scleroderma. And at, when I saw the physical change in my body that evening, I threw my medication away. Wow. Against? Against counsel, <laughs> yes. Um, but I was convinced in, inside, in my heart that I was either healed or being healed. Have you had any trouble with it since? No. Have you had any trouble with leukemia since? No. I got a clean bill of health from Emory University four months later. Wow. In April of 2004. And so that's been four and a half years ago, roughly. Wow. Yes. If there's somebody unbelieving, not sure, doesn't know what to think, would you give them your heart? Okay. Surrender to God. <laughs> Just give up to Him. Um, he brought me to the end of myself. He didn't give me leukemia. He didn't give me scleroderma. However, because of that, I surrendered. I was going through... Uh, a time with my marriage at the time that that was falling apart. Financially, my world was very falling apart. And uh, it forced me to surrender to God. So I encourage you strongly to surrender. There's so much freedom in that. I didn't realize how bound up I was in all that other stuff that I mentioned. And uh, freedom is what he is what God wants for you and for me. He wants us to know Him. He wants to know the living God, and He's way different probably than your father, your dad was growing up. He's kind and generous and 
loving. A hundred percent. He loves you a hundred percent, no matter what. No matter what you do with this information, no matter what you do from now on, or what you've already done and been. He loves you a hundred percent. So I strongly encourage you to surrender to him. Let him have it. Let him have you. Every area of your heart. That's the way I like to think.